Hello everyone and welcome to the OWASP Recital. In this video I'm going to show you how to solve two web exercises from the Balsan CTF 2023. First one is 0FA, a login system with zero-factor authentication. They provide the source code for us to run the challenge locally. When we open the challenge, there is this login page with the username. If we supply something and submit a query, it will perform a post request to the flag.php and it tells us that our login failed. Let's take a look at the source code. In flag.php, there are two validations happening, a fingerprint check and a username check. So the username must be admin. So let's check the fingerprint check function. On config.php, we can see that the fingerprint check is checking the JA3 header, SSL header, and it's comparing our fingerprint to this one. So we must be able to spoof this fingerprint so we can bypass this check. First, I needed to learn what is J3 because I didn't knew. So I found this resource that explains that J3 is a standard for creating SSL client fingerprints. Basically, it's TLS fingerprinting and uh, it will take this information from the client hello packet that happens after the TCP three-way handshake. After reading this, I also found a tool called Cycle TLS done by Dani da Silva that allows us to spoof the TLS J3 fingerprint in Go and JavaScript. In this case, we are going to use the JavaScript one. So with this module, the Cycle TLS, we will just perform a post request to the flag.php. We are going to set the username equals admin on the body to pass this verification. And then we are going to specify the J3 that the server is expecting on the config.php file. Don't forget to send the form URL encoded content type header so that it will recognize what you are sending on the body. And then once we run this attack, we will get our fake flag in this case. To solve the exercise in the live instance, you would just need to point it to it, and then you would get the real flag. If you want to reproduce this solution, you can go to the link below and check this GitHub repository that contains the code of the challenge and then also this solution. You can just follow the instructions and if you face any issues, please let me know. Next exercise is the SAS. The name is already a hint for the exercise. The S stands for serialization, I think, serialization as a service. And we have a link and we also have the server code so we can test it locally. When we try to access the application, we will just be getting a 404. So we'll have to take a look to the code of the application. In the default configuration of the server, we will see that here we are getting this 404. And to get to the backend server, we need the server name to be something.sas, and then the host needs to be this one. If both of these are in place, we will be able to get to the backend server. To do this, we just need to change the HTTP request. I've used burp for this in this case. And instead of get slash, we will get this instead. And this will change the server name to .sas. And then we can also spoof the host header with what the server is expecting. So we can bypass the 404. And here we already got our 200 OK with the pong hi. If we take a look at the index, what we are getting is exactly this. We are getting the slash and we are retrieving the pong high with the 200 response. Now that we can communicate with the backend server, we can check which functionality does it have. It seems to have a register endpoint and the who will do this endpoint. We can also see that they are using here the serializer selector from Fastify fast json stringify compiler and also the fastify npm module and gladly they are logging the errors out which is very good for us in this case so on the register endpoint we can perform a post request and sending a schema in the request.body so they can create a validator from this schema 
they will then return us a route so we can call and then apply that validator to this JSON object that they have here. I've used the required property of the schema. So if we trigger an error, if this property is not present on the object that we are validating, it will trigger an error and we can see that error reflected back to us. And once we submit this post request, we will get a route to then trigger the validator that we just created. When I was researching on how to approach this challenge, I stumbled upon this report on Hacker One, which is about a server-side JavaScript code injection on the Fastify module as well. And this is where I got the inspiration from to exploit this vulnerability. In this case, my final solution was to use the process variable to then require the child process module and then spawn sync to run commands on the server. In this case, we are just cutting the flag. On the server side code, we could see there is a flag file. So if we are able to run commands on the server and display the contents back, we are able to solve the challenge. If you want to reproduce this locally on your machine, feel free to click on the link below and follow the steps on the write-up to solve this challenge as well. I hope you enjoyed these solutions. Please leave a like and subscribe and see you on the next one.